I thought I had managed to seduce my son-in-law, but the reality was completely different. This is my story. My name is Emily and I am a devoted housewife. Even though I am 58 years old, my life has been the same since I was 20. When I married Benjamin, I usually stay at home cooking and doing chores while my husband spends all day at work or drinking with his friends on the weekends. We have three adult children who, for several years, no longer live with us. That being the case, it was normal for me to feel lonely to the point where I didn't feel like doing my daily activities. I even began to notice that I was getting sick often, even though I was a strong woman who almost never had even a cold. However, everything changed when my oldest daughter, Sophie, moved near our house with her new boyfriend, Oliver. They were both 26 years old and had an energy that was contagious. So for me, it was like a blessing that they frequented me during the weekends and even some lunches on work days. But as the months passed, I began to experience something that undoubtedly put me in an uncomfortable situation. I didn't know how or when, but it was clear that I was enthralled by my son-in-law, who was not only a handsome and athletic man, but also had impeccable manners and always had a good topic of conversation. I love talking to you, Emily. He had told me one day when we were having lunch together, since Sophie had to go out for work reasons and I loved serving him. I love your company. I responded smiling as I continued serving his plate. You are identical to your daughter, or should I say that she is identical to you? I blushed at the comment. What things do you say all of her? It's serious, he exclaimed. They are both equally dedicated, loving, helpful, and they cook delicious. Then when I went to hand him his plate, he took my hand. My heart skipped a beat when I felt the contact of his skin with mine. Something so innocent that it seemed to me since we were alone. That day, I cried as I watched him leave for his house with Sophie and I was left alone in my home again. I knew that my daughter was in love with all of her because, as her mother, I knew her like the back of my hand. But the more I thought about it, the more jealous I became that she could get the attention I wanted from Ah, it even bothered me to sleep with my husband Benjamin with whom I had not been intimate for several years. In any case, Benjamin did not seem to want to be intimate with me. So in my nights of desire, which had returned after sharing with all of her often, I had to solve it alone. I had so much desire that I didn't mind doing it with my husband fallen from the ground. Even though my mind kept thinking about the young man who had conquered my daughter's heart. Up until that point, my attraction to Oliver was something innocent and personal that I kept to myself. However, everything would change on my birthday. That day, Sophie had taken me to a spa and beauty salon as a gift. It had been a considerable amount of time since we last had a mother-daughter outing. So we decided to take that moment to share together. The treatments they did on our hair, face, and body made me feel younger and empowered, capable of seducing anyone who was in front of me. But all that feeling would go to waste when she confessed one of her secrets to me. I'm trying to get pregnant. She said that hit me like a bucket of cold water. Because although I should have been happy because my daughter would give me my first grandchild, it was the last thing I wanted at that moment. I'm very happy to hear it. Those were the only words that came out of my mouth. She knew they weren't like a mother who was happy that her daughter would follow the cycle of life. But it was the most honest thing she could express at that moment. However, Sophie seemed not to notice and instead continued the conversation. But I have a problem. My daughter's remorseful face made me suspect that not everything was rosy with the news she told me which one I said interested. Oliver doesn't know what I exclaimed. Oliver doesn't really want to be a dad. He confessed to me. But you know how much I want to start a family with him. I decided to stop taking care of myself. So when I get pregnant, I will say it was a failure. Sophie, mom, promise me you won't tell Oliver anything about this. At that moment, I felt my breath stop. I knew that the promise I had made to Sophie was worth a lot since she was my daughter. But I also had powerful information. Nation in my hands to get what I wanted. That was going around in my head throughout my birthday evening, where my husband and my two remaining children dedicated themselves to getting drunk, while Sophie and Oliver attended to the other guests, delivering the food and other things they had prepared. But when night fell, so if you told me that she felt tired, so she would go to bed early after organizing everything, my children and my husband continued drinking to the loud music, and Oliver didn't seem to want to join them. 
so I went to where he was alone to sit next to him. Did you have a good time today? He asked me. I smiled. It was a good evening. That day, I had decided to wear a short black suit very close to my silhouette that made me look 10 years younger. As Sophie's advice, she had made me wear it without an interior because according to her, it was fashionable. So at that moment, when the blizzard was blowing hard, I felt frozen in my little black dress that covered absolutely nothing. Emily, you're shivering, he told me covering me with his body instantly. But that didn't matter to me at all. Instead, a torn of emotions began to engulf me instantly as my senses heightened, capturing every detail of this moment, the comforting aroma of H. Lotion, the rhythmic beat of her heart merging with mine, the sensation comforting from his warm, firm body against mine. At that moment, I decided to do what I wanted. Because if my daughter was able to use all of her to get something she wanted, I could also do the same. I think I should go inside. I told him testing his reaction. I'll accompany you. He said without saying a word. Then he took me by the hand leading me with him towards the warmth of my house. I felt in heaven because I was receiving the treatment I wanted so much, even without realizing that we were alone in my room. When I closed the door, I made sure it was locked because I knew perfectly well that I would not leave there until I was able to enjoy the only preferential treatment that my daughter had and I did not. I think this might look good on you. He told me showing me a jumpsuit that practically covered my body. I bit my lip. It was at that moment or it would never be. I have something to tell you all of her. I said, what happened? Are you okay, Emily? He asked, frowning. I'm fine. I responded, approaching him slowly. My legs felt like jelly, but I pretended to be safe as I moved forward. But not my daughter. What do you mean he didn't move? Instead, he seemed paralyzed by my sudden change in attitude. She will stop taking care of herself so that they both have a child. His bulging eyes did not surprise me and even made me feel sorry for him. Oliver seemed confused and upset by what he said. So he took a couple of seconds to respond to what he had said. How do you know he told you clear? I'm his mother. After all, I said with a shrug. He also told me that you don't want to be a dad for nothing in the world. He said, shaking his head. Why would Sophie do something like that to me? Sometimes women must look for desperate measures to get what we want. I said almost as if the voice of experience was speaking, even though it was my first time breaking out of the mold of the perfect woman and housewife. At that moment, I sat on the bed, stretching my skin and sighing deeply. I slowly opened my legs, revealing that I was not wearing the underwear as he was standing in front of me. His eyes were bulging again, but this time it was different. His cheeks were painted a pink tone that made him look younger. While he could notice his Adam's apple go up and down several times when he swallowed thickly. You have nothing to fear with me, I said. As time passed, his gaze darkened as he remained fixed there where my center was shamelessly exposed. I decided to lift my dress a little higher while slowly touching my legs. He licked his lips still without moving from the spot. Are you sure? Completely, I said without saying a word. With each passing second, I felt my center contract becoming wet and ready to be used by Oliver. Suddenly, he knelt in front of me and taking one of my legs, he raised it to his shoulder. Then I felt his hot mouth on my leg going up with butterfly kisses over every inch of my skin. My mind was spinning as I felt the moisture growing in my crotch at the same time as my upright chest begged to be touched. But my mind exploded when his tongue first explored my opening. It was so soft but cold that it was impossible for me to cover the sobs that came out of my mouth, much less when both hands grabbed my hips and pressed me to their face, while following a pattern that was leading me to no heaven. It wasn't long before I finally exploded, filling his face with my juicers. Contrary to what I thought, he decided to clean his mouth with his tongue, tasting my fluids without any shame. But that was far from over, because my dress flew over my body at the same time that my four limbs landed on the softness of the mattress. Furthermore, all of her put pressure on my back, causing my chest to also touch him. So the only thing that was in the air was my, but he did not hesitate to enter quickly because he already knew she was ready. One of his legs was on the bed, which made me feel it deeper and deeper, while the sheath helped me camouflage the screams of pleasure that came out of my mouth. 
But that didn't last for long because Oliver grabbed my hair tightly and lifted my face, leaving it in the air. Let them hear you, he said between his own moans. Let them know that I'm making you mine. And I obeyed. When we had finished the fourth round, Oliver leaned me on his chest and drew on my back. I felt happy and satisfied because I had what I had wanted so much for several months, and the experience had surpassed any imagination I had had in the past. I had done it, I told myself, congratulating myself for bringing into bed a younger boy who had taught me what it meant to enjoy intimacy. However, when we were changing, Oliver said something that made me realize that my plan wasn't really my own. I already knew it. He said, I frowned. What are you saying? I already knew Sophie had done that. I stopped my hand who was adjusting my dress. Why didn't you tell me anything? I asked. You offered yourself to me on a silver platter, and I wasn't going to waste the opportunity. Oliver's comment would have seemed shameless to me if it were anyone else, but coming from him. It seemed like having an accomplice in a forbidden adventure. I laughed softly, almost as if I were a little girl who had committed a prank as I took off my clothes in front of him again and let him do whatever he wanted with my body all night. Oliver and I said goodbye in the morning as if nothing had happened. While Sophie thanked him for taking care of me when she had gone to sleep. I'm not going to lie and say I was remorseful when I wasn't. On the contrary, it was as if we both had a new inside joke to laugh about when we were alone. He would continue to take care of his mother-in-law when my daughter couldn't. And I couldn't be more grateful to have such a diligent son-in-law who would bring the stars down to bed for me on nights when I was cold. And now telling me would you take advantage of the opportunity to feel this way thanks to your son-in-law, comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time.